Greetings. I'd like to welcome you here today for another daily devotion. We're going through the book of Matthew verse by verse together, and today we'll be looking at Matthew 7, verses 12 through 14. We've been tracking along with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and for those of you who've been following along, you've probably thought at some point that this is humanly impossible to keep the commands and teachings of Christ in these in this sermon. And Well, it's good news, because this is exactly what Christ wanted you to conclude so that we would turn from our human effort and trust in him alone to live out our Christian life. We saw from Matthew 7 verses 1 through 6 how Christ told us not to condemn other people as though we were their judge and he warned against harboring bitterness and hatred in our hearts, telling us to remove the log from our own eyes before trying to remove the splinter from someone else's. And Christ has made tremendous demands upon us in setting up the perfect standard, and this is what the law was intended to do. At this point, we should be humbled and feel completely hopeless and helpless and say, how can anyone, let alone me, attain to such a standard? His sermon was designed to crush our self-confidence and self-reliance so we would cast ourselves completely on the mercy and grace of God. And this is exactly what Christ wants from us. He wants us to see our helplessness and need for him and turn to him for divine help in order to live out our Christian life in a way that's pleasing to him. And if nothing else, at this point, it's obvious that we need spiritual strength to live a righteous life. And today's verses are no different. We need the empowering of the Holy Spirit to carry this out. So let's petition the Lord for a filling of his spirit today. Amen. Let's start by reading verse 12 together. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. The statement is known as the golden rule, undoubtedly the most famous thing that Jesus has ever said. Many quoted in some shape or fashion without even knowing that it was Christ himself who said it. And notice that Jesus says, whatever you wish others would do to you, do also to them. Now let's take a minute or two and reflect on our behavior towards others up to this point by asking ourselves this question. How would we be treated by others if, if, we were to, if they were to treat us the way we currently treat them? Would we be getting a stream of encouraging phone calls or would we be gracious recipients of their selfless love, grace, and mercy? Or would we be pretty much left alone to ourselves? No phone calls, no encouraging words, no cards, no home visits, no expressions of God's love, or perhaps maybe even something worse. They criticize us at every chance they get just to tell us how, where, and when we've completely missed the mark. So how would others treat us if they were to treat us the way we treat them? I think all of us could say that we have room for improvement here. But like I said before, we need the Spirit in order to walk by the Spirit. So let's cast ourselves on the grace of the Lord and ask His Spirit for the help we need to live that out. Now, why do we have such a hard time living this out? Well, the answer is alluded to in our next verse. Let's move on to verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it are many. As humans, we're born with a sin nature, and as a result, we have selfish desires. In Galatians 5, 19 through 20, Paul says something to the effect, now the deeds of the flesh are evident. He says, immorality and impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities and strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these so because of our sin nature, we're bent to carry these things out without any effort at all, really. So now hopefully Christ has given us freedom from many of those things. But notice that things like outbursts of anger, disputes, jealousy, and strife, they're in the same list alongside things like immorality, drunkenness, and sorcery. So since we have an inherited sin nature, we don't need any help to carry out the deeds of the flesh. We can do that quite fine without any help. So wide and easy is the way that leads to destruction, and that's why many are those who enter through it. Let's continue on to verse 14. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, 
and those who find it are few. Interesting that the Greek word for hard or narrow here contains the picture of grapes being pressed. And when they're pressed, the skins break, releasing from it juice that gets turned into wine. Now, wine was considered a blessing, so this passage is pressing us. The question is, what kind of juice is, is flowing out from us? Are we conduits of God's blessing onto others, or are we more like sour grapes? <laughs> After describing the, the deeds of the flesh, Paul continues in Galatians 5, uh, telling us what the fruit of the Spirit is. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he says, against such things, there is no law. Well, how do we do that? Well, by the powering of the Holy Spirit, we need to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires, realizing that we live by the Spirit, we are then empowered then to walk by the Spirit. So consider your actions today towards others. Are they reflective of the way you would like to be treated? Since Christ and his perfection is our example, if we're honest, all of us can improve here in this area. So let's, again, take some time asking God for a filling of his Spirit to carry out these commands in our daily lives and actually start treating others the way we would like to be treated. God bless you to that end. I look forward to seeing you next time.